MRLs and PHIs of registered products. If you would like to obtain information on maximum residue levels or MRLs, as well as pre-harvest intervals for crop active combinations that are registered for use in South Africa, you can use the following steps to retrieve the information from AgriIntel. On the main menu, please select Residue Management, MRLs. A new menu will now open to reveal three different sections. The first section is MRLs and PHIs of registered products. In this section, you will be able to find information on local and international MRL values for crop active combinations that are registered for use in South Africa. Please note, in the event where you might be looking for an MRL value for crop active combinations that are not registered for use in South Africa, you will have to refer to the section on all MRL status report instead. In MRLs and PHIs of registered products, you will also be able to obtain information on what the local withholding periods are. This information will reflect the PHIs, which are currently indicated on the latest product labels. Information on the recommended export PHIs for the major fruit export crops, such as palm fruit, stone fruit, grapes and citrus, will also be available here. The MRLs and PHIs of registered products section will also contain information on the private standard requirements and market preferences of various international retailers for the use and residues of pesticides. There are three different types of reports available in this section, namely summary by crop or use, summary by active ingredient and search by active ingredient. Summary reports will group together trade names with the same PHIs and targets in one data row. In this way, the reports will become shorter. The search by active ingredient report will not summarize and group together similar data. As a result, the report will be much longer. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will be looking at the search by crop or use report as an example. Please select summary by crop or use. On the next page, where you have to put in your search parameters, you will notice an optional filter. This filter will work exactly the same as it does in all other reports in the database. Please refer to the video on download labels for more information on how the optional filter works. You can use this to streamline your search. From your drop down list, you need to select crop or use. Here you'll see all the crops or uses for which we have registrations in South Africa and which we also have in the AgriIntel database. As an example, I will be selecting apples. Next, you need to determine what you would like to search by. Do you know your active ingredients and trade names or are you only familiar with trade names? For the purpose of the first demonstration, I'll be looking at active ingredients and trade names. Once we've had a look at that report, we will come back to this section and we'll now select trade names to see what the difference in the report layout would look like. Select active ingredient and trade name. In the drop down list for select active ingredients, I will now notice that the active ingredients will only show which are registered for use in South Africa on apples. From this list, you can select individual active ingredients. You can either type in the name of a specific active ingredient that you have in mind and the system will search for that active. And I'll also be adding a few more active ingredients as an example. Next, you need to select the trade names. Once you've selected your active ingredients, the trade names will also adjust automatically to only show trade names that contain the active ingredients that you have selected. I'll be adding a few trade names for demonstration purposes. Now you need to select the destination. The destination represents the countries for which you would like to view MRL information. I'll be adding a few countries as an example. The last section is select market or retailers. Now this is an optional section where you can choose to, if you would like to look at the information for various international markets or retailers. In the drop down list, you'll see the international markets for which we are currently maintaining information on AgriIntel. I'm selecting a few of these markets as an example. However, if you're not interested in looking at international retailer pesticide requirements, you can leave this section blank. Once you've made all your selections, you click on Submit. Now, this is typically what the MRL and PHI summary report would look like. At the top, you have your crop name and the time and the date when the report was generated. The first column will contain your active ingredients. 
they're organized alphabetically. You're also able to filter in the active ingredient column to look at one active ingredient at a time. The trade names are listed in the second column. As you can see for Abamectin, it has quite a few trade names available. All the trade names have the exact same PHIs and targets, and therefore they are grouped together in one data row of entries. You're also able to filter in the trade name column. The third column represents the targets. You're also able to filter in this column. The next column represents the EU acute reference dose values, or ARFD values, as well as the EU approval status of the active ingredient. We have included these columns because there are some international retailers to which our growers are exporting that do not permit residues above certain percentages of the ARFD values, or that do not permit residues of any active ingredients that are not approved for use in Europe. Over the last couple of months, we've received quite a few inquiries from users who do not understand how to interpret the EU approval status column. If an active is indicated as approved, it means that that active is approved for use within the EU. If the approval status is approved, there's also a footnote that will indicate what the expiration date is in the EU. If an active is not approved for use in Europe, that does not mean that you cannot use the active in South Africa if it's legally registered for use here. The only time that it becomes problematic is if you as an export grower are supplying a market that don't permit any residues of an active ingredient that is not approved for use in the EU. The next columns represents the different countries with their MRL values, and then the countries that you've selected with their PHI values. The columns right at the end represent the market or retailer preferences. If you were to filter on one trade name, in this case, I'm selecting Abamec Plus, you will now notice that for Abamec Team, you will only see the trade name which has been selected. The other trade names are no longer showing. At the bottom of the active ingredients, you'll find blue text called comments. Now the comments refer to the little star footnotes which you will see inside the MRL reports. As an example, in the USA MRL column, there is not an MRL value listed, but a little star footnote. This means that there is a USA MRL comment that you need to check in the comments section. In your comments section, look for the entry for USA MRL. Here you will find a synonym description, also the residue definition that is used in the United States, and then right at the end you'll notice two different MRL values, one for apple wet pomace and one for fruit poem. Some countries maintain multiple MRL values for different crop active combinations, depending on what portion of the plant is used. Is it the fruit or the stalks or the stems or the leaves or the format in which the crop is used? Is it dry? Is it a juice? Is it a pulp? When you've got different values like these, we will normally show all the various MRL values in the comment section with a description on what exactly it relates to. In the case of Aldi, you'll also notice a red block with a star. This means that there is a comment for Aldi that you need to check in the comment section. The Aldi comment will then inform you that Abamectin is a blacklist too active for Aldi, and it also will provide a description on what that means. Right at the bottom of the reports, you'll find various keys. The first key is the color key. This contains different colors with a brief description on what each color means, and it relates to the market or the retailer information in your report. If we look at m &S, for example, you'll see there is a yellow block. The yellow color means use of caution referred to comments. Now, in your comments section, you need to find the entry for m &S, and it will inform you that this active ingredient is a monitored pesticide for m &S, along with a description to let the user know what that means. The next key is the region or destination key. This provides an abbreviation for the countries as well as a description of the full country name. There's also a date when the MRLs for each country was last updated, as well as the date when the PHI information was last updated. We also provide the dates when ARFDs and approval status information was updated. The final key is the market key. It gives you the abbreviation of the market along with the full market name description. Sometimes in the MRL reports, you'll find a blank cell. This means that we have not added in any information in the MRL database for that specific combination. 
At the top of the report, you'll have an hide show columns function. Here you'll see all your column headings, and if you would like to exclude any of these columns from the report, you can just deselect them and they will no longer be visible in the report. If you would like to print a copy of the report, select print and follow the printer instructions. You're able to change the printer settings underneath more settings. If you would like to download a PDF version of the report, click download report. This is typically what the PDF reports would look like. It has the same layout as the website. If you would like to download a CSV file of the report, click download XLS. This is typically what the CSV file would then look like. With one major difference, the comments are no longer displaying underneath the active ingredients. They are all grouped together at the column right at the end. Now we go back to search by to show what the reports would look like if we were to select trade name. Now in the first column, you won't have your active ingredients anymore, but your trade names will be arranged alphabetically in the first column. Active ingredients are now displaying in the third column. In this report, you'll also be able to view the registration numbers or the L numbers of each trade name. PHIs and targets are grouped in row with the trade name because they are trade name specific, while your MRL, acute reference dose values, market preferences and EU approval status is showed in row with the active ingredient because they are active ingredient specific. If we filter on volume targo as an example of a trade name that contains multiple active ingredients, we will notice that there's two rows, one for abamectin and one for chlorantronilipril. The PHIs and the targets are still displayed in row with the trade name, while each active ingredient will be listed in the same row with its MRL values, market preferences, and approval status and ARFD information. If we look at abamectin as an example, in the EU approval status, the status is listed as approved with a little star. This means that there is a comment on the EU approval status that you will have to check. The EU approval status for abamectin will give its specific expiration date. For chlorantronilipril, there's a separate entry which gives chlorantronilipril's expiration date. In the EU MRL column, you'll see two different EU MRL values, but both of them have got a footnote. However, in the comment section, we only see one comment entry for the EU MRL, but it clearly indicates that that entry is applicable to both abamectin as well as chlorantronilipril.